Hello, everyone, and welcome to this latest edition of What's New in MXU. Um, I'm Stéphane Couture, and I'm joined today by Alexandre Grégoire, the newest member of the OmniScan team. Alexandre, welcome. Thank you very much for the warm welcome, Stéphane. It's a pleasure to be with you today. As Stéphane said, we are going to go over the newest feature of MXU 514 and 515. Mm -hmm. So let's begin with uh, a TFM setup. So a one inch thick plate, 25 millimeter thick plate with a single uh, weld inspection. Mm -hmm. You can see we are live on the instrument now. So the latest addition to MXU is that we now have the ability to use a uh, multi-group, so multiple views simultaneously. So we can now see that we have uh, a combination of 2T and 4T uh, with PCI and TFM combined. Mm -hmm. So it really enables the user to see clearly what's happening in its parts. So for all of your inspection needs, uh, code-based, amplitude-based, you can use your TFM for your uh, procedures, and you can uh, sur superimpose or add the PCI with its benefits in terms of resolution and, and SNR uh, to some, uh, some indications, some features. Yeah. Easier to see, let's say, tip diffraction using PCI, uh, and while seeing everything with the, uh, the TFM setup. So very nice to have. Yep. Um, next on the list, we improved quite a bit the, the scan plan, bringing more, uh, bringing more tools to the user. Um, so to demonstrate that, I'm going to start fresh with a new setup, just so that we don't uh, drag all of uh, Alexandre's setup with us. Yes. Uh, so going into plan and calibrate, We'll start by defining, again, the same weld, um, one inch or 25 millimeter thick V-weld uh, made of carbon steel. So 25 and a V-weld, the default. So the first uh, feature on the list is the auto detection of the phase array probe. For those familiar with the MX2, the detection used to happen on the probe connection. Uh, that came with its benefits and drawbacks, mainly multiple misconnections. Now we have a dedicated button on the interface. So as you press detect probe, it auto populates uh, the, the, the field with the probe information. Uh, next, let's select the phase ray wedge. So we still have access to the list as uh, we used to have. New to this version also is the ability to access the probe and wedge manager straight from the scan plan. So if you have any custom probe, custom wedges, uh, you can enter them directly and save them to the database. Uh, but we're using the standard 55 degree shear wave wedge. So that would be the SA3255S. And let's move the probe out of the well. Now, other features uh, with your phased array, uh, you'll see we have a red overlay on top of the beams. That is your near field, near field uh, display or calculation. Uh, you, from the view tool, you can turn it on or turn it off. And what that allows to see is the natural focusing of the probe with the defined aperture and angles. Yeah. Uh, that can be useful if you ever want to focus your inspection, let's say. Um, and you want to see if the focusing will have an effect or not, because we can only focus uh, up to the natural focusing point of the probe. Mm. Uh, in this case, we see that we are outside of the near field with our region of interest. So I'm going to increase the beam quantity and really maximize it all the way up to 64. And now the whole weld is flooded with, with red and basically all of our uh, region of interest is encompassed in the new field. Combine that with the focusing strategy, and we now have all of the tools to define a focused inspection. Uh, so we're adding to the uh, simulation and, and onboard um, tools to help with uh, scan plan creation. Just like so. So negative 30 from the screen, we can see that the focus is aligned with the weld bevel. 
uh, we're inside the red zone, inside the near field. So that's gold. Uh, other tool that we have, let's turn this off for now. We have the ability to highlight a special or a dedicated beam, I should say. And in the bottom left corner, we have an angle that's the angle of Vince, how do you call this? Yeah, it's the bevel of the incident. It's the BIA bevel incident angle. I'm sorry, okay. but it's it's one of my fi my favorite feature in this release of MXU. Honestly, it's very clear to see what's happening inside of the part. And you have access to this feature using a COD part as well. So it's a very great great feature to have. It speeds up the inspection setup. It's perfect for someone who's having complex inspection to perform as well to see really what's happening with the beam. So basically what this provides or the, what this returns as information is how perpendicular the beam is to your uh, weld bevel line. In this case, we're at 78 degrees. So if your tolerance is plus or minus 10 degrees from 90 degrees, well, this one doesn't meet the criteria. If I go up to 50, now we're at 80 degrees, that would be the start of our beam perpendicularity. Easy again, very intuitive to use. Yeah. Uh, and finally, the other uh, area, or the other zone that we worked on is the selection of the technology. So you have three different columns uh, for your phase array, for your FMC, where you can now select between TFM and PCI yes. straight from the scan plan. And we also added PWI or plain wave imaging. Exactly, new, newly added to uh, our offering with the OmniScan in this release of MXU. We now have the ability to perform PWI, so plain wave imaging. And we also have the ability to use both TFM or PCI using the PWI uh, data collection method. Yep. So it's a very great feature, uh, very nice addition to our, our software, honestly. Mm -hmm. Perfectly fine. It's working great. If you'd like to know more about uh, PWI, we'll have a dedicated video coming soon on the, the feature, the technology, and, and uh, its benefits. Mm. Great. Thank you very much, Stefan. Moving uh, back to you and your computer. Absolutely. Let's move on to uh, OmniPC and also a new feature that is available in OmniPC, but also in MXU. Um, if you remember, we uh, we launched a new view, so it's a merge B scan, mm -hmm. which enables the user to see all of its angle in a plain uh, plain view, in the same time. Instead of uh, viewing every angle one at a time, we can see combine all of the views and see it in one single plane. Uh, so this feature is newly available with uh, linear and compound scan. Initially, it was only available with the uh, sectorial scan. Now it's available with sectorial, linear, compound again. Mm -hmm. And newly added, we now have the ability to see on the S scan what's happening with the first and last beam. So if I play with the value we have on my screen, let's say first beam, we'll see a gray overlay uh, happening on my S scan, which really tells me what's happening with my S scan while seeing the differences into the B scan. Mm -hmm. So it gives the user better reference for like to to if he wants to, let's say, remove some uh, some some things happening on it, its S scan and seeing what he is removing on the S scan. Mm -hmm. So basically, in this case, you can target uh, the back wall reflection from your low angles and easily determine where you need to stop your uh, your minimum angle to remove it from your merge B scan. Yeah. Very neat, very neat. Cool. So now back on the uh, X3, mm -hmm. uh, we have, and that's what I was fiddling with, we have a uh, hydroform setup ready to go. And the reason why is because I want to demonstrate a little bit of uh, performance improvements. Uh, that's one zone that we addressed with MXU 515 and that we will keep on improving over the next revisions is really uh, improving the performances of the instrument, uh, making it more responsive, snappier, less waiting time for the user. Uh, so right now we have the hydroform or a hydroform setup uh, defined. 
just going to display the C scan, which is our uh, patch area. And if I go under scan, inspection, and I turn on the raster scan for a mapping. Um, previously, it was, let's say, slow to change the, the scan area, the index area. Uh, it was a bit of a tedious process. Uh, now with 515, as you change the value, uh, the response is pretty much live. Yeah, it's a lot more stamp here, as you said, and mm. it will really help the user navigate through larger files or larger setups, quicker, right. easier. And uh, you can change from small increments or you can create a zone really much bigger from two meters, let's say, of scan area. Uh, and that would be just as fast. Yeah. So that's one step uh, you saw also in the scan plan. It's much more uh, snappier, as I mentioned, or faster to refresh. Um, and like I mentioned, we will keep on improving uh, on this as well over the next few releases. Yes, exactly. It's very, it's a point we consider very important for us to improve, uh, to give the user ability to navigate through large files. As uh, as you know, the file size improve, keep improving in size, and we want to keep uh, the instrument snappier when we are dealing with larger files. Mm -hmm. So I think that sums it up. Yes. Thank you for joining me today, Alexandre. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to know more about these, feel free to contact your local cell representative or us. Uh, myself or uh, Alexandre, we'll, we're always happy to, to, to help and assist you. Uh, tune in for the next video. That will be 5.16. Yep. Next video, 5.16. Again, everyone, thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Stefan, for taking the time to present myself as a new member of the team. It's a pleasure to work with you guys, uh, and it's a pleasure to discuss the new newest improvements on our MX2 and OmniPC uh, softwares. Thank, Thank you, you very much.